Well, hey guys, and welcome back for a little more remote learning with Maine Fish and Wildlife here. Today, we're going to uh, focus in on our bony fish anatomy. You're never going to look at a fish the same way um, after today. We're going to learn the names of our fins and all the external anatomy of uh, the members of Osteichthys, those bony fish we have swimming around in Maine's fresh water. I'm hopeful that at this point you've logged into Google Classroom and you've uploaded um, this file, the Bony Fish Anatomy uh, file, to Notability so that you can hop into split screen and follow along with me today. I'm going to ask that you submit your copy uh, to the assignment folder for credit for today's class. So just uh, follow along here and uh, make sure you pause the video when you need to. Follow along, get that anatomy filled in, and uh, you'll be good to go on today's lesson. So here we have a, kind of a composite fish, a random cartoon fish, um, doesn't necessarily represent any one species, and they do this so that we can look at a variety of different um, anatomy, because not every single fish has all of these uh, various pieces of anatomy we're going to talk about. So um, maybe we'll start right over here today, and we'll work our way kind of clockwise around the fish. We'll start with some pretty easy ones, and then we'll get through. Now, most people right here, what we're looking at right there on our fish, would call that the nostril, and you certainly can, but let's think about the official kind of uh, biological term for that. Those would be the nares, and that's Latin um, for nostril. If you want to really, you know, impress your friends. You can refer to your nostrils as nares, and they will have no idea what you're talking about. You can explain to them that, oh, yes, uh, sorry, that's uh, Latin for nostril, you know. So there we have the nares on our uh, on our fish. Um, if we go along here, this is another pretty easy one. We've got the eye on our fish here. Now, um, <clears throat> from here, this is where things get, uh, um, you know, a little more interesting, and we can uh, f work our way all the way around this fish, thinking about the names of these various fins. Um, and right off the bat here, we're not looking at a fin. We're looking at a structure on this fish's body, which all of our bony fish have, that we call the lateral line. And it is literally a line that runs laterally uh, down the fish's body. And that is a sensory organ that allows them to feel uh, vibrations and other fish in the water around them. Let's see if we can find a fish picture here real quick. Oh, let's see. We must have fish pictures on our iPad that we can look close and see the lateral line. Here we go. Um, let's see. Oh, man, we got to look at, we got Steve-O with a couple of crappies here. Can we see the lateral line on those? I don't know if we can. Super clear. It's there, but uh, tough to tell. Let's see if we can find a good, oh, man, look at this close-up of a brook trout. And if we look closely, look at that little dotted line down that brook trout's body, kind of mixed amongst those spots. We can see right in there. Pretty classic, the lateral line on our uh, brook trout there. So there you have it, the old lateral line. Um, and that's a sensory organ that allows them to feel uh, other fish in the water around them. It senses vibration. That's really the reason that a lot of fishing lures you might use, those things are made to create vibration in the water, and that allows a fish to find that lure located. It's really neat. And I always wonder what it'd be like to have a lateral line and be able to feel things around you moving. Um, you know, to fish at night in the ocean for stripers like I love to do and think about their ability to locate and uh, grab a hold of a lure in complete darkness in the loud ocean. That's all lateral line allowing them to do that. And it's a pretty amazing feat that they're able to do it. So the lateral line is a really cool sensory organ. It's possessed by, you know, all fish from predatory fish all the way down to, to prey fish. Um, the predators certainly use it to locate prey. And those schooling bait fish, those little guys, tend to use it to uh, sense their... their uh, their friends around them that allows them to swim in these really tight schools in perfect unison. That's the lateral line at work there. So uh, really cool stuff. Now, these next two fins that we have on the back of our fish here on the, on the dorsal side are our dorsal fins, this one here and this one here. Not all fish have two dorsal fins. What we're going to see on trout and salmon in Maine is that they have a single dorsal fin. Some of our fish do have two dorsal fins, though, and uh, we'll call this... Um, we're going to call this the spiny dorsal fin. And if you look closely, there are spines there. I bet some of you guys out there have learned the hard way about certain fish that have spiny dorsal fins, things like yellow perch and sunfish. 
um, those spines will hurt you, right? They'll, they'll prick you with those spines uh, if you're trying to handle the fish and you're not ready for it. And that's just a defense mechanism that a lot of these fish have developed over the years that kind of helps them uh, protect them from predators and things like that, that spiny dorsal fin. So some of our fish in Maine possess a spiny dorsal fin uh, and some don't. Some just have uh, you know a single soft dorsal fin. Now, oftentimes on fish that do have that, that uh, spiny dorsal fin, if we come back here and we look um, at the second one, the second one here, the second dorsal fin we'll often call their soft dorsal fin. That one won't hurt you as bad. And again, if we go back to our images here, I bet we can, you know, we look at a brook trout, hard to tell there, it's only got that single dorsal fin. Uh, but let's see, back to Steve-O with those crappies. Here we go. Uh, they technically have two dorsal fins, although they kind of blend all together as one, but we can see the spines at the front there and those softer rayed fins. Um, at the back and let's see what else we have for fish hard to tell here with our pickerel oh we got Devin with a pickerel and we can see a pickerel has just a single dorsal fin um, right there on its back way back towards the back of the fish but just a soft dorsal fin we don't have to worry about that too much with our pickerel so there's your dorsal fin and uh, oh man Devin was Devin was just slaying him that day there's another pickerel another nice look at a dorsal fin there nice work Devin all right uh, so Let's go back here and let's uh, let's continue on. Now we're missing a fin here that some of our fish in Maine have and some don't. We're gonna add it in, and uh, we're gonna draw in this little fin right here. It's usually a kind of just a bump. It's always located behind the dorsal fin. We'll make our own box for this thing. I wonder does Notability make? Oh, boom! Look at this. Notability will make a box if you draw a rectangle and just hold. Um, so uh, let's see. I'm gonna come over here. Notability, I know we'll also make a nice straight line. If I, oh, wow, this is looking official. So let's let's draw in here. This is a fancy fin that we only find on our cold water fish, our trout and salmon and smelts in Maine. And actually, catfish do have them as well in the warm water side. This is the adipose fin. And adipose uh, is a term used in anatomy for fatty tissues. So fatty tissues are called adipose tissues. And adipose fins are certainly that. They're just kind of these fatty fins. Um, they really lack rays that you can feel. They're just kind of this soft, um, you know, fin that's probably vestigial. It's left over from, you know, millions of years ago. It's kind of working on going away. But uh, a lot of our trout and salmon or our trout and salmon do still have them. And I'm wondering if we can skip through here and find like a picture of a trout and see it. There we go. Just, just ahead of its uh, caudal fin there, which we'll get to in a moment. You can see that little adipose fin on the brook trout there compared to its dorsal fin up here, which is folded up in the net. But right there, we can see that classic adipose fin. And we would see that on um, brook trout and brown trout, all, all the members of our salmonid family, trout and salmon, as well as smelts and things like that. Oh man, look at this. Yeah, nice set of shed antlers there, Scarlet. <laughs> so yeah, and what we'll notice there though is, you know, here's Nate with a pickerel and no adipose fin on the pickerel, just a dorsal fin there. So. Not all fish have the adipose fin. Um, so we want to make sure we add that adipose fin in there. We want to know that. If you guys get a hold of a brook trout this winter, you want to be able to impress your buddies and point out that adipose fin. Now here is the next one um, that 99% of the general public would call that the fish's tail, right? But here's the problem. Fish don't have tails, Right, a tail is like a, an extension of your, you know, a fish's tail. They don't have a tail. It's it's weird, right? They they have um, a fin there all the way uh, posterior, and that, my friends, is we're gonna start calling that the caudal fin. And I really encourage you to correct every single person that you hear from here on out. Call that a tail. It's not a tail. It's a caudal fin. Okay, we need to we need to change this misconception. So there you have it, the caudal fin um, on the fish is that, that one that's often referred to as the tail. Going back to our fish pictures here, we can see a variety of shapes in caudal fins, um, you know, from a brook trout there, which is, uh, that's kind of a messed up caudal fin from a, a stocked brook trout, but we can see a, kind of a deeply forked caudal fin on that uh, chain pickerel. Um, and caudal fins come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, going back through here, what else do we have? Look at Mr. Frost with a haddock down here. There's the caudal fin on our haddock. So look at that. We got all kinds of 
uh, shapes and sizes in, in um, caudal fins. Steve-O again with a fall fish, also called a chub in Maine. And there's a deeply forked caudal fin. No adipose fin, just that one single dorsal fin there on the, uh, on the, uh, that fish. So let's come back and let's carry on here. So down underneath, uh, just ahead of uh, the vent on the fish or the anus, there's, these fish will possess an anal fin. It's always located just behind the anus on the fish. And um, again, if we look at, you know, here, there we have an example on uh, that fish there. Let's go back. We can quickly zip through. I wanted to show you the crappies because these things have, um, oh, there we go again. There it would be on the chain pickerel. Uh, but crappies are an interesting one because their anal fin's located pretty far forward compared to other fish. There's a brook trout, anal fin there, that single fin underneath. Um, I wonder if we can get a good example of a crappie. Stevo again. So the, their anal fin matches almost perfectly their dorsal fin. Uh, and look at how far forward that anal fin extends. Their, their vent is actually way up around uh, the kind of the center of their body instead of uh, all the way toward the back, which is kind of interesting on crappies. And I was, it's always interesting to look at it, the different shape of a crappie. There's Barry with that crappie he caught there last year. So there you go. Let's go back here. Let's come forward a little bit. Oh, yes. Here, the next one is, you know, the equivalent of a fish is wing. And I think about wings on birds are controlled by their, uh, are controlled by their pectoral muscles, um, just like our, our arms are controlled by our pectoral muscles. And that is a pectoral fin. It's essentially, you know, a fish's wing that they use for lift as they uh, guide themselves through the water. Nemo had a little, had a, one of his pectoral fins was a little bit messed up, right? So he had a, he had a damaged pectoral fin. Um, so there you go. There's your pectoral fin. And if we, again, I just love looking at real fish and thinking about pectoral fins. Back to Barry's crappy here. There's a pectoral fin on the side of the crappy and it would have a matching one on the other side. We can see another pectoral fin here on the side of that pickerel. Here we go. Oh, Nolan's covering up that pectoral fin on that pickerel he caught there. Let's see what else we can find. Oh, look at that beautifully uh, white leading edge on that brook trout's pectoral fin. So for all these various bony fish, they all possess pectoral fins. Um, there you go. Now, this next one here as we come along um, uh, is actually a pair of fins. And I may customize this a little bit. I'm going to draw this like this to kind of show a little bit of perspective that there's actually two of them there. And those are a pair of fins under the fish, down along its belly, that we call the pelvic fins, okay? And there's actually two of them, so I'm gonna put that in plural, the pelvic fins down under the fish there. I like to kind of customize that a little bit to show that there's two. I think it's important to recognize that they have a pair of pelvic fins and let's come along here and see if we can find images that'll show pelvic fins. What There's just one of them there on the brook trout, kind of folded up against the side of its body. Uh, and these fins are really used for guidance and help to steer them around in the water column. Uh, again, we come back here, we can see that one pelvic fin kind of mid-body ahead of the anal fin, but behind the um, uh, pel uh, pectoral fin. Let's see, let's see if we can find a good picture of a fish with some. Now on these crappies, we can see, oh, there you can see both pelvic fins underneath that crappie and how far forward they're located compared to other fish. Like the pelvic fins are pretty far forward on a crappie. They just have some really interesting anatomy. And we'll come ahead here. Oh, look at Devin. Per Devin is, is perfectly displaying both pelvic fins on this chain pickerel as well as both uh, pectoral fins, just really taking a great picture to uh, illustrate some anatomy. Nice work, Devin. I love it. Uh, all right. Here we go. Let's continue on. We got the pelvic fins. Here we have um, this bony plate that helps protect those gill structures. We talked last class about how fragile and important those gill structures are for gas exchange with these fish. And that is a bony plate called the operculum. And um, all of our bony fish have kind of a hard structure there that helps to protect those gills that would be hidden down there 
uh, beneath the operculum. They'll often use that operculum to pump water across their gills. And that's a pretty important structure uh, for these guys to help really protect those gills. Oh, and there's there's Sierra kind of illustrating uh, that bony operculum there just ahead of her, her hand on that chain pickerel. Um, and you can see uh, Destiny there with a nice, uh, with the operculum kind of flaring out on her pickerel. This was an awesome day we had at, uh, at Mill Pond uh, last fall with the club. Now, oh, here we go. Great image there of our brook trout again. You can see the operculum kind of the just behind the eye there guarding its gills, and you can barely make out those gills underneath there. And so that operculum is that bony structure that helps protect. There's that nice uh, shiny operculum on the crappy. Helps protect those gills, which are super fragile little guys. Uh, now, easy one here. We've got our mouth on our fish. That's easy enough. And we want to add one more box here. And these boxes are how I can really tell the folks that have been following along and playing ball. Uh, we want to add one more box, and we want to label it um, those whiskers underneath that uh, fish's uh, chin there, or rostrum. We want to label these barbels. Those uh, are sensory organs. They'd probably have, you know, taste buds or, or some sort of uh, sensors on there to taste or smell as these fish swim through the water column. Um, they're able to taste the water or drag them along the bottom and find food. Not all fish possess barbels. Uh, we only have a couple in freshwater in Maine. We're going we're gonna to learn about cusk. Uh, which have a single barbel, and then we'll learn about Maine's native catfish, the brown bullhead, um, also in Maine referred to as the hornpout. That's got plenty of barbels, and we'll, we'll check those out when we learn about those fish. But we want to know that those are referred to as barbels. Some people would just call them whiskers, but the official term uh, for that structure on a fish would be its barbels. So there you have it, guys. Uh, hopefully you've been following along today, filling in your bony fish anatomy for me. This will be on some sort of quiz or test at some point. And um, we'll play some Kahoot with it as well to, to practice. But um, I appreciate you guys tuning in and working hard. Make sure that you submit your copy uh, in Google Classroom to get credit. And I'll see you guys next time.